This video is on p-values. We're going to start with two definitions. The first definition is the p-value or attained significance level is the smallest level of alpha for which the observed data indicate that the null hypothesis should be rejected. I prefer the second. Given that the null hypothesis is true, the p-value is the probability that the test statistics takes a value as extreme or more extreme than the actual observed sample value. To help understand these definitions, we're going to use an example we've used in previous videos. And it's the one that concerns an admission officer at a university who claims that the average incoming high school GPA for current applicants is greater than 3.5. To verify the claim, you take a random sample of 64 application packages and find a mean GPA of 3.57. Historically, you know that the variance in the GPA is 0.23. Do you believe the admissions officer's claim? As a quick review, we'll review the hypothesis test that we had done in the previous video. We'll start with the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis was the mean incoming GPA was less than or equal to 3.5. The alternative was the mean incoming GPA of the high school students is greater than 3.5. We had used an alpha, or a probability of a type 1 error, it's 0 0.05. And our test statistic is y bar. It's approximately normal by the central limit theorem. Mu mu, standard deviation sigma, square root of n. In this case, we know sigma, or sigma squared, 0.23, and we know that n is 64. What we had done then is we calculated the rejection region. Totally look like this. Centered at 3.5 under the null. We would reject if we're greater than that. We want to find this k value. This area was alpha, 0 0.05. Again, this is the distribution of the random variable y bar, our test statistic. And we found that by doing a probability calculation. Probability that y bar, the random variable, is greater than k. Given that the null is true, this is our definition of a type 1 error. Given that we reject, I mean, sorry, probability reject given that the null is true has to be 0 0.05. If you use a software package, such as R, you would calculate that. Q norm, we want the area to the left. The area to the right is 5%. Area to the left, 95. Under the null, our mean is 3.5. Standard D, 0.23. Or 64. And that gives us a value of 3.60. Our actual sample mean, 3.57, which is less than k, we failed to reject. Another way we did this is we looked at a 95% lower confidence bound. Okay. For us, we calculated that using Q norm again. Q norm 0 0.05. This time we're centered on our sample mean, 3.57, and we have the same standard D, 0.23 over 64. And that gave us a value of 3.47. Our lower confidence bound was from 3.47 to infinity. And since it's a GPA, we really wouldn't go to infinity, we'd go to 4. We compare that with our null mean, 3.5. Since that is in the interval, we fail to reject. And notice the similarity on the first hypothesis test. We centered around the hypothesized mean. And check to see if the sample mean was inside 
And the second one, we send it around the sample mean and check to see if the hypothesized mean was in the interval. The last idea is p-value. Using definition two, the p-value is given that the null is true, it's the probability of getting data as extreme or more extreme. Our data was a sample mean of 3.57, and that's given that the null is true. In other words, we're looking at the probability that we got data ex as extreme or more extreme, so I'm using a lowercase white bar, given the null is true. And we want to calculate that. That's our p-value. We are going to use an R, the p-norm command. And that gives us a value of 0 0.1215. 0 .5. So probability, if the null were true, of getting a GPA, sample GPA of 3.57 is about 12.15%. Two ways to interpret this. You could just report the p-value and let the decision maker decide what they want to do with it. They can come up with their own alpha to decide. So report, just report the p-value and let decision maker decide what to do. For a second thing, compare p-value with the alpha. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is larger, fail to reject the null hypothesis. One last note, for two-sided, you have to be careful with the p-value for two-sided tests. Let me draw a picture real quick. Two-sided test, under h naught, under the null, we could reject if we were bigger than some k or smaller than some other k. This is where we're putting alpha, we're dividing it by two and putting it in both tails. There's two possibilities. We Our sample mean, y bar, could come in on the upper end, i.e. being greater than the hypothesized mean. So if sample mean is greater than hypothesized mean, p-value, and now we got to double our calculation because we got to put that probability in both. So we're going to take two times the probability that y bar is greater than sample little y bar given mu equals mu naught. We got to double it because you just like you had to put alpha in both tail, you have to put the probability, the p value in both tails. If y bar is less than the hypothesized mean, p value. Then we get the doubling, two times probability that y bar is as extreme or more extreme, in this case be less than the y bar, given that the null is true. So be careful with the two sided. Remember to double your probability calculation. And one last thing to note about p values is they give the decision maker more information. They actually tell how close you were to the potential. Uh, alpha value. So there's more information there. And that's our lessons on p-values.